Hey friends, so this video is meant to serve as a very simple and quick tutorial on how to determine the gender of a tarantula. Seeing as you're here and you've found this video, I'm going to assume that you already understand the molting process of a tarantula and why they do this. However, for any of you who may not be aware, I will just briefly explain that tarantulas need to molt periodically throughout their lifetime in order to grow larger. These animals have exoskeletons, which means that they wear their skeleton on the outside of their body. The skin of a tarantula can essentially be thought of as a suit of armor. And while the soft tarantula inside of this armor grows larger, it eventually needs to break free in order to have more room to do so. Though some species of tarantula have outward physical characteristics which help to identify their gender, the most surefire way to do this is by inspecting their shedded exoskeleton. In order for this to be successful, there are three things that you need to consider. The first being that the tarantula has to have reached sexual maturity in order for this determination to properly be made. Though the length in which it actually takes a tarantula to reach maturity is dependent on its species, gender, diet, and environmental conditions. Generally speaking though, this will be at least a couple years after their conception. The second thing to consider, and which I'll explain more in depth as we go, is that you want the molt to be as fresh as possible. The longer it's been allowed to sit and dry out, the more likely it is that it's become damaged and unusable for this purpose. This ties into our third factor, which is that if there is a lot of damage done to this molt, then you're not going to be able to use this, and you'll simply have to wait until the next time your tarantula molts to try again. So now that all of that has been stated, let's talk about what we actually need to use in order to do this. The first thing you'll probably want to use is a pair of latex gloves, as touching tarantulas with your bare hands can often lead to hairs becoming stuck in your skin and massive irritation. The next thing you'll want to acquire is some forceps or fine tweezers, as this process is fairly delicate, and doing so with your bare hands can usually lead to damaging the mold further. The only other things you need is the actual molt of the tarantula, a bowl of warm water, and you'll want to do this in a space that is brightly lit so you can actually see what you're doing. The first step in this process is to soak the dried mold in the bowl of warm water and allow it to become soft and pliable once again. This typically won't happen immediately, particularly if it's been allowed to sit and dry out for a while, so I'll probably leave it in there for about 20 minutes, but you can always check to see if it's become soft, and if it is, then you can probably pull it out and get started. Once your tarantula mold is soft, you'll want to lay it down on a flat surface and very carefully spread it out. Particularly when you get to the abdomen, this is when you need to start using those tweezers to very gently examine this part of its body because this is where you're going to need to check to determine the gender of this tarantula. This particular molt belongs to a Nahandu trapepi, and I already know that this is a confirmed female, but that's good because as you can see, the majority of the abdomen here is missing. Due to this, I'll not be able to use this to determine the gender, so I'll have to try again another time. This missing piece of the abdomen either broke off as it was drying, or it was damaged while the molting process itself was happening. Sometimes when a tarantula molts, it's just not possible after to determine. Luckily, I already have on hand the exoskeleton of a Brachiopelma bomi, and I'll be able to show you using this just how to do this. So we will once again go through the process of soaking this exoskeleton until it's become soft and easily manipulated. So now for my second attempt, I will once again very carefully lay out and flatten the exoskeleton of this tarantula and spread open the abdomen. What we're looking for here is a very small flap which is located in the top center of the bottom of the abdomen. This small space is where a female tarantula will store the sperm of its male counterpart. If you're able to locate this, then this is definitely a female tarantula. However, not being able to see it does not necessarily determine that it isn't one either. You also need to take into account, as mentioned before, that if it's not reached sexual maturity, this simply won't be visible. It's also not always that easy to spot, and it does take a little bit of practice. So it really is that simple. This is an easy way to determine the gender of a tarantula. However, it's something that you'll probably have to do a few times before you get the hang of it. If you have any questions about this, you can feel free to contact me and I'll try to help you out. Though I do hope you found this video useful, and if it has at all been helpful, then please consider subscribing to my channel where you can find more content about tarantulas and other cool animals. Thanks for joining me today, friends.